Before the pyramids cast their first shadows, before the Sphinx gazed upon the sands of Giza, there flowed a river, the Nile, giver of life, cradling an ancient civilization in its embrace. A land where the pulse of life beat in harmony with the inundation cycles, where gods and mortals danced the eternal dance of existence. And at the heart of this realm stood Alexandria, beacon of knowledge, where Greek wisdom met Egyptian ancientness. In its storied annals, amidst tales of gods and heroes, emerges a legend. A woman whose name would transcend time. Cleopatra, the last pharaoh, the living goddess. A tale of beauty, intellect, and ambition begins. Alexandria, a jewel by the Mediterranean. But how did this Greek vision find its home in the heart of Egypt? The tale begins with a young Macedonian king, Alexander the Great. His conquests stretched far and wide, but Egypt held a special place in his heart. Here he founded Alexandria, a city destined for greatness. But Alexander's early demise led to a power vacuum. His generals divided his vast empire and Ptolemy, one of his most trusted commanders, claimed Egypt. The Ptolemies, though Greek, embraced their Egyptian realm. They adopted its customs, worshipped its gods, and even built temples that rivaled the ancient wonders. Yet, with power came intrigue. The Ptolemaic dynasty was rife with alliances and betrayals, often within the family. Marriages between siblings, a practice to keep the bloodline pure, became a trademark of this lineage. But it wasn't just power plays. Under the Ptolemies, Egypt experienced a renaissance. The Great Library of Alexandria, home to a myriad of scrolls, became the intellectual epicenter of the ancient world. However, as centuries passed, the dynasty's grip wavered. Rebellions, economic struggles, and external threats plagued the realm. Amidst this backdrop of grandeur and decay emerges Cleopatra, the last in the line of the Ptolemies. A beacon of hope, intelligence, and ambition in a dynasty poised on the edge of destiny. In the heart of the royal palace, amidst whispers of political intrigues and the weight of a legacy, a child was born, Cleopatra. Growing up as a Ptolemaic princess wasn't all luxury and games. The palace's golden walls bore witness to the interplay of power, ambition, and treachery. But Cleopatra was no ordinary princess. Her hunger for knowledge was insatiable. Educated by the finest tutors of Alexandria, she delved into subjects diverse and profound. From philosophy to astronomy, from economics to the arts of governance, she was a sponge, absorbing all. While most of the Ptolemies spoke only Greek, Cleopatra stood apart. Fluent in multiple languages, including the native Egyptian tongue, she could converse with ambassadors from distant lands and connect more intimately with her own people. But her education wasn't confined to palace walls. Cleopatra ventured out learning from the living tapestry of Egypt itself. She understood that to rule her land, she first had to know and love it. As the stars shone down on Alexandria, they gazed upon a young Cleopatra, a budding intellectual, diplomat, and leader destined to become the very embodiment of her land's aspirations and struggles. In the heart of Alexandria, a game was unfolding, not one of dice or chance, but of thrones and dominion. The death of the preceding pharaoh left the double crown of Egypt to Cleopatra and her younger brother, Ptolemy the Trait. But with it came a web of politics and intrigue. As co-rulers, they were expected to govern as one. But how can two souls, bound by blood yet divided by vision, truly unite? Childhood rivalries evolved into political confrontations. The palace became a chessboard with every move, alliance, and betrayal echoing throughout the land. The court was divided, factions emerged, loyalties were tested, and the very pillars of the Ptolemaic dynasty seemed on the brink of collapse. As Cleopatra sought to reform and strengthen Egypt, Ptolemy's advisors conspired, viewing her progressive ideas as threats to their traditional power. The city of Alexandria, once a beacon of unity and prosperity, found itself torn. The looming shadow of Rome, ever watchful, added to the tinderbox of tensions. Cleopatra, though born to privilege, was learning a harsh truth. Wearing the crown meant bearing its weight. And in this game of thrones, every move could be your last. The Mediterranean, 
a vast expanse of blue, not just a body of water, but a bridge between two worlds, the splendor of Egypt and the might of Rome. Rome, with its legions, roads, and senate, was a burgeoning empire. Its appetite for expansion and dominance was insatiable, and to the south, Egypt, with its grain, gold, and strategic position, was a tantalizing prize. But beyond conquest, there was trade. Egypt's bountiful harvests fed Rome's growing populace, the Nile's gifts, in return for Roman goods and, importantly, political backing. Cleopatra, always the astute strategist, recognized Rome's significance. But she also knew the vulnerabilities behind its marble veneer. The bond between Rome and the Ptolemaic dynasty wasn't new. Earlier pharaohs had sought Roman aid against internal revolts and external threats, but every favor came at a cost. As Cleopatra ascended the throne, Rome was embroiled in its own power plays. Julius Caesar, Pompey, Crassus, names that would deeply entwine with Cleopatra's fate. For Cleopatra, forging ties with Rome wasn't just about trade or defense. It was a chess match, where hearts and minds were as crucial as legions and fleets. As the Mediterranean waves kissed both Egyptian and Roman shores, destinies converged. Cleopatra's tale was set to intertwine with the eagles of Rome, crafting a saga of love, power, and ambition. Alexandria, where destinies were forged. As Cleopatra grappled with palace intrigues, a new player entered the arena. Julius Caesar. Not just a Roman, but Rome itself. His arrival wasn't merely diplomatic. It was the embodiment of Roman power and ambition touching Egyptian sands. Their first meeting is the stuff of legends. Cleopatra, ever the strategist, ensured she wasn't just seen, but remembered. A rolled carpet, a surprise unveiling, and thus began a partnership that would reshape history. Their union was a confluence of power. Cleopatra, with her vast knowledge and vision for Egypt, and Caesar, with his unmatched military prowess and political acumen. Together, they dreamt of an empire unparalleled. But amidst statecraft and dreams, there was also the personal. Their bond bore fruit, a son, Caesarian, the living testament of Rome and Egypt's union. Yet, every tale has its shadows. In Rome, their relationship was viewed with suspicion. Cleopatra, the powerful Eastern queen, was seen both as an exotic allure and a potential threat. But in Egypt, their union was a beacon of hope. Together, they navigated revolts, economic challenges, and laid the foundation for a golden era. Two rulers, two empires, one shared destiny. Theirs was a dance of power and passion, leaving an indelible mark on the annals of time. Under Cleopatra and Caesar's combined leadership, Egypt entered a renaissance. It was a golden age, where dreams took shape, and the impossible seemed within grasp. Trade flourished, with Egyptian grain, papyrus, and treasures reaching distant lands. The Great Library of Alexandria teemed with scholars, fostering a cultural and scientific revival. Majestic structures rose, etching their legacy in stone. Infrastructure expanded, and the realm experienced a harmony not seen in generations. But it wasn't just the land that thrived. Their personal bond deepened, transcending politics and power. Together, they imagined a world where Rome and Egypt reigned supreme, united by love and ambition. Yet far away in the heart of Rome, the winds of change blew. Caesar's increasing power, coupled with his relationship with Cleopatra, stirred unease. Rumors, jealousy, and fear spread like wildfire. The Ides of March, 44 BC. A date that would echo through eternity. Caesar, the great general, the visionary, was struck down by those he considered allies. Word reached Cleopatra. The golden age, it seemed, was but a fleeting moment in the sands of time. Her ally, lover, and the father of her child, gone. The tragedy was not just personal, but political. With Caesar gone, Cleopatra faced an uncertain future, teetering between her dreams and the harsh realities of leadership. Rome, a city in turmoil. With the void left by Caesar's untimely death, power struggles emerged. Among those seeking to dominate was Mark Antony, a loyal general and close friend of Caesar. Antony's eloquence and charisma endeared him to the masses, but they also posed threats, especially to the young Octavian, Caesar's adopted heir. Egypt, while grieving for Caesar, 
was also a nexus of Roman diplomacy. Cleopatra, ever the strategist, was sought by many to secure alliances. Among them, Mark Antony. Their first meeting was nothing short of theatrical. Cleopatra, aware of Antony's love for spectacle, presented herself as the living embodiment of the goddess Isis, and Antony, he was smitten, both by her charm and intelligence. Their alliance was passionate and multifaceted, blending love, politics, and shared ambitions. Together, they dreamt of a united realm where Rome and Egypt's strengths would be amplified. Their union bore fruit, twins, symbols of the sun and moon, embodying the potential of their parents' shared vision. But their dreams weren't without obstacles. As they sought to expand their territories and influence, they drew the ire of Rome, particularly Octavian. Octavian's propaganda machine was relentless. Cleopatra was vilified, their love story twisted, and the stage was set for an inevitable clash of titans. The Ionian Sea, calm yet deceptive, its waters were soon to bear witness to a clash that would reshape history. Octavian, the young lion of Rome, saw in Antony not the celebrated general, but a rival ensnared by Cleopatra's allure. His campaign was as much against their combined might as it was against the idea of an Eastern-ruled Roman Empire. In Egypt, Antony and Cleopatra rallied their vast forces. Their combined navies and legions represented the zenith of Eastern Mediterranean power. Yet, beneath the surface, tensions simmered. Not all were convinced of the impending battle's wisdom. Cleopatra's influence over Antony was both their strength and their Achilles' heel. 31 BC, the Battle of Actium. It wasn't just a battle of fleets and soldiers, but of ideologies, East versus West, Old World versus New. In the midst of the chaotic melee, Cleopatra's fleet made a tactical retreat, hoping to preserve part of their forces, but the sight of the Queen's ships leaving caused despair in Antony's ranks. Antony, torn between duty and love, chose the latter, leaving behind his forces, his reputation, and a legacy forged over decades he followed Cleopatra, sealing their fate. The Battle of Actium wasn't just a military defeat. It marked the beginning of the end for Antony and Cleopatra, and the dawn of a new Roman era. Alexandria, the jewel of the Nile, now stood on the precipice of change. The aftershocks of Actium reverberated through its streets. Inside the royal palace, Cleopatra and Antony, once the beacon of power and hope, were shadows of their former selves. Their dreams lay shattered, but their bond remained unbroken. To the west, Octavian's legions advanced, their march echoing the relentless passage of time and fate. Egypt, the ancient realm, was in their sights, not as an ally, but as a prize. Antony, ever the general, mustered his forces, seeking to defend Alexandria. Cleopatra, the diplomat, explored paths of negotiation, hoping to secure a future for her children. But the sands of time were running out. Outside Alexandria, Antony's forces met Octavian's legions. It was not to be a grand showdown, but a somber finale to Antony's storied military career. Deception played its cruel hand once more. Receiving false tidings of Cleopatra's death, Antony, in despair, fell on his own sword. A warrior's end for a life lived by the sword. Cleopatra's heartbreak was profound. Yet in her grief, a final act of defiance was born. She would not be paraded as a captive in Rome's triumph. Her destiny was her own. With the bite of an asp, Cleopatra embraced eternity. The last pharaoh of Egypt, she chose to depart on her own terms, marking the end of an era and the immortalization of a legend. Alexandria, where the echoes of the past meet the voices of the present. Here, Cleopatra's spirit lingers, not as a specter, but as a legacy. Though millennia have passed, Cleopatra's influence remains palpable. She is not merely a historical figure, but a symbol of power, intellect, and charisma. From Shakespeare's quill to the silver screens of Hollywood, Cleopatra's tale has been retold countless times. Each rendition, a testament to her enduring allure and the universal themes of her life. In Cleopatra, women across ages find inspiration. Her reign, amidst a world dominated by men, showcases resilience, intelligence, and the audacity to carve one's destiny. 
scholars and historians, even today, remain captivated. Each discovery, each parchment, offers a glimpse into her world, reigniting debates and fueling our collective curiosity. Cleopatra, the last pharaoh of Egypt, departed this world, but her saga remains immortal, a tale of passion, power, and perseverance, forever etched in the annals of time, reminding us of the indomitable human spirit. We've journeyed through the sands of time together, unraveling the epic tale of Cleopatra. If you've enjoyed this voyage into history, please give us a thumbs up. And to ensure you don't miss out on more captivating stories from the past, hit that subscribe button. Let's continue this journey of discovery together. Thank you for being a part of this adventure. Until next time, keep exploring and stay curious.